Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everybody seems so happy and full of joy. I know you're happy to be here, right? Yeah. All right, we'll get all y'all to stand up and grab a hymnal. And we're going to sing a beautiful praise unto our Lord and Savior. We'll get you to turn to page 595. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Send the Light. Discussing this for a while, and we finally decided to do it. Uh, 
It says here, if they don't burn the kitchen down, we'll continue to do this. they got a lot of faith in us. <laughs> I have never set our kitchen on fire yet. Now, my wife has. <laughs> so see there, it don't have to be just us men. But anyway, if we don't burn it down, we're going to do this, try to do it every month. Uh, had not been a time set, well, I guess we'll get together sometime between now and then, set the time and let everybody know. Ladies' Bible study, we're going to have it two Wednesday nights in a row this month. We're going to have it this Wednesday night and next Wednesday night. So y'all remember that, you as every other. So we're going to have it two Wednesday nights in a row here at the church at 6.30. Any other announcements? All right. Function first. Who was that? I don't say John Terry. Oh, did it? Okay. I just checking out my nephew here. Any prayer requests this morning? Uh, my brother Delbert Miller. He's uh, got surgery coming up first week in October <coughs> to replace some valves in his heart. Here, Williams. He had the appointment with MD Anderson on the 24th. Brother Bill, back here. I just need your prayers for my breathing. Stephanie? I'd like to say something. I said one on Friday, but that's impossible. I really want to thank all of y'all. Y'all too, Steph. Please. Brother Gary Brantley. Yeah, I was going to mention him. I got him on there. Y'all remember Brother Gary Brantley? He's at uh, what hospital is he in? Mother Francis and Tyler. Mother Francis Hospital in Tyler. Mm -hmm. Annie Tone. Her cancer has spread. Mm -hmm. Did you say Annie? Annie Tone. Mm -hmm. Brother Randy. Steve uh, Brother Law David. Maybe we want to trade. Who is that now? My brother in law, David Ford. Oh, okay. Ford. Yeah, he might be good. Yeah. We need to put him on a more permanent part of the prayer. Anyone else? The Ainsworth family. Family's just kind of struggling with Miss Ainsworth in the hospital and Mrs. Ainsworth in bed fast. James Hill, would you lift these people up, please? Father, we thank you. We thank you again for the opportunity to be in that house, sir, Lord. Lord, we just love you. Thank you for everything you do for us, sir, Lord. The ones that's been mentioned here on this prayer list, sir, Lord, you, you know their problems and uh, what, what needs to be done there, Lord. We just pray that you just preach them and touch them and feed them according to your will. Be with us as we go through this service. Be with you. Get y'all turn to page 600. <clears throat> Don't we need more of Jesus? So we're going to sing uh, all four verses of more about Jesus. <laughs>
24 for our offertory song. Get y'all to stand up as well. <coughs> We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Count Your Blessings. <laughs>
So we're going to be singing Oceans. I know a lot of people sing it, but she chose a song. So. Ouch. <laughs>
get our deacons to join with me in prayer for Brother Bill. He asked us to pray for him. Tell us to already pray for him. I think it's a fitting that, that we call on the name of the Lord and get to have Father God, we, we love you and we praise you. And our brother here has asked that we pray that he can pray. Father, we just pray that God that you would reach down and call us. You feel this place with your holiness. Pray that you feel this place with your spirit. Pray, Father, that you feel our brother with your spirit so he just flows over. God, we just pray that you would touch him even now, that you would touch his body, that you would touch his lungs. God, that you would bring about healing and, and, and breath to his, his life, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are our breath of life. Father, you breathed life into us and made us a living soul. And we need that breath so bad. God, we don't we don't realize how what a blessing it is until it's taken from us. God, we just lift up Brother Bill to you now. We pray, Father, that you touch him, God. And Lord, if it be your will that you just heal the lungs, God, you touch him and he'll be doing the breathing. And God, that he might give you all praise and all glory. Lord, we trust you. <coughs> we love you. We want your will to be done. Brother Bill. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For hearing our prayer, for being our great physician. God, may your will be done today in this church and in Brother Bill's life. And we can give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for all of those that uh, that came over there and uh, and and uh, supported us in that revival service and uh, and uh, just thank you for doing that. I appreciate so much, uh, Brother John and, and Randy, and uh, for for you know what the, the 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 working of the church ought to be this: we follow Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is His house. This is, the, the church is, is governed by the Holy Spirit of God. And whether the preacher's here or not, the church must go on. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm thankful that we have men who God has called to step up. And in my absence, you don't miss anything. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, guys. Thank you all for being faithful to him and, and doing those things. Because you know what? It's, it's not an easy thing to do. And so thank you all for that, and, and God bless all of you for the decisions and everything that you made uh, during this, uh, during our time away, and and, and, and and praise the Lord that the church moves on. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, the, the flowers uh, are beautiful, and uh, they came from uh, Sister Tina, uh, Sister Kay's daughter, sitting back there with her from the Queen City Floral, and we appreciate these flowers. And Johnny Crow said that one was his favorite one because it hid me back there. <laughs> 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 we uh, thank y'all, so y'all be sure and give her a big hug and, and a big uh, thanks for uh, for supplying those, these beautiful, beautiful flowers. They're, they're really beautiful. Brother Jim Voss came in this morning and said, who died? Where's the cat? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for those uh, those beautiful flowers, team. We appreciate that. And that's not the first time she's done that, by the way. Uh, we need to, we need to be faithful to her and remember and thank her for for uh, thinking about us in these times. Uh, I want to talk to you this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn to the Book of Hebrews, Book of Hebrews, chapter two. I'm going to be reading quite a few verses, more than I usually do, verses six through eighteen. I'll be reading uh, quite a lengthy. If you have your, uh, I hope you have pens with you, and I hope you can take some notes. But you know, uh, as the Lord gave me this message, and I began to, to see what what this chapter tells us about our Savior, we all need to underline and score these these verses to, to remind us sometimes just exactly what He's done and why He did it. Uh, we need to know that. 
We need to be able to, to confirm that with other people that we know him. <laughs> We know why he came. We know why, what he did when he got here. And we know the goal that he has for us all. And so we need to be able to show that and, and be able to tell that to people. So Hebrews chapter 2, verses 6 through 18. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visiteth him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, by the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death of every man. For it became him, for whom all things, and by whom all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, and I will sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Father, thank you for your word. Speak to our hearts as only you can do. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And the question in, in verse 6, it's an age-old question. It's been, been asked for uh, centuries. It was found in the book of Job, written in just a slightly different manner. Job is perhaps the oldest written word in our, in our Bible today. They're not really even sure of the time with, in which Job lived. And they, they believe that it was one of the earliest writings of any, any writings in the Word of God. And in Job chapter 7, verse, and it's amazing how much insight Job has to who we are today. But Job in chapter 7, verse 17, wrote this. What is man that thou shouldst magnify him, and that thou shouldst set thine heart upon him? He asked that question, who, who are we? Who is mankind that God would even take note of us? Who are we that God would magnify us? Who are we? Job knew that he wasn't a whole lot. He knew before Jesus Christ. He knew that without the Lord, he was nothing. We need to take that humility and apply it to our lives and to realize without Jesus, we're nothing. We're not anything but a lost person. Destined but, but the verses 6, 7, and 8 is a direct quote 
actually from Psalms uh, chapter 8, verse 4 through 6. And this psalm and this quote from the psalm describes the, the status of man that was given to us by God. In the beginning, God gave man dominion over his creation. And all the things that he had, uh, had created, God gave man the dominion over. And the Lord, after he gave man the dominion, and he said it is this very good when he created man, he blew the breath of life into us, then he decided he needed something else from man. Well, he didn't just decide it then. He already knew that, what he created us for. And that was that we could have fellowship with him. Y'all, the Lord don't just desire that you have fellowship with him. He desires to have fellowship with you. Think about what that means. How, how wonderful it is to know that the most important being ever desires to know you. Desires to fellowship with you. Not just know you, but have a relationship with you where he knows you deeply and you know him in the same way. Isn't that amazing and wonderful that, that the Lord created us for this time? And so when, when, when you look back at that time and, and how uh, he, he did those things and he came in the evenings and, and with Adam and Eve and he would talk with them and have fellowship with them. But you know what? Man chose to sin. Man chose, despite the relationship that God desired with him and despite the relationship he, required, he, de he desired for us to have with him, Man still sinned. Man still was deceived. And man willingly broke that fellowship with God. If we're not careful, y'all, we still do that today. If we're not careful, that same fellowship, that same desire is still in God. He says, I'm the Lord your God and I change not. His desire is still to have fellowship with you. Y'all, listen to me. When there is a new heaven and a new earth, we always talking about going up to heaven. The reality of it is, Sister Patsy, He's going to put us on a new earth and He's going to bring heaven down to us. Amen. That's His desire. That's His plan. He wants to love you. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to have a holy, godly relationship with you like you've never had in your life with anyone else. He wants that. Amen. 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 The man decided, I'd rather have the pleasure of sin. And he broke that fellowship. And he was cast out of that beautiful garden he was cast out of that wonderful time of fellowship with the Lord. But aren't you glad that that's not the end of the story? Aren't you glad that God has a plan? He has a plan for us all. And it's up to us to participate with God in that plan. And so we see in verse 9, Look at that <clears throat> word, that, the beginning of that verse. But we see Jesus. God had a plan. It started in the beginning of time. It started when Adam and Eve sinned. That he made the first promise of a Savior that was going to come from the seed of Eve. And he made this promise and, he, and the whole Bible from that day on was prophecies and things that were written and there was a great uh, looking forward to, to the Savior coming. When Jesus Christ appeared on the scene thousands of years later, they were still looking for a Savior. But they had it in their mind what this Savior was supposed to look like. And they had it in their own thoughts despite what the Scriptures was telling them that they had it in their mind how God was supposed to do this. Y'all, we have to be careful that we don't get it in our mind how we think God should function in the world. Amen? Amen. 
The way God functions in the world is up to God, not to us. Amen. We are to conform to Him, not Him to us. Amen. That means we are to know His Word, read His Word, study His Word, hide His Word in our hearts. Why does the Bible tell you to hide His Word in your hearts? That you might not sin against Him. And so this is, this is the whole procedure. But He sent Jesus. But we see Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Now, why did Jesus... He came... Listen to this, what He did. Now, He came to humanity. Guess where He came from? He left heaven. He left glory. And He came here. He left heaven. He came down to earth. And He took on a robe of flesh. Listen to this. He just didn't come and have a body. He was born like we all are. Amen? He was born into this life. He was a child just like we, when we were born, we became children. And our children are here. Jesus became a child just like our children are. Amen? And then He went into adulthood just like we do. And when He went into adulthood, he entered into a ministry, a role. When the time was right, in that last three years of his life, when he reached adulthood, he began to, to fulfill the plan of the Father in ministry. And so he assumed the role of the Savior of the world as designed by his Father, by God the Creator. Verse 16 tells us this in this chapter. <coughs> For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Everybody that the Lord God had sent from glory here had been an angel. Amen? Amen. You know what, Brother Jim? We couldn't hurt them angels if we had to. Remember when they went into Sodom and Gomorrah, what those people were wanting to do to them? And Lot felt that it was his duty to protect those men. Listen to me. Those angels didn't need protection from Lot. Because they had protection from Almighty God. Those men could not touch those angels. But Jesus didn't come like that. He came in the role of man that was described to us in the book of Psalms. He came in flesh and blood and he was lower Listen to me. He became lower than the angels. And that meant that he could suffer. That he could know pain. That he could bleed. And that he could die. And he came to us that way. Amen. 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 But there was Jesus. Thank God for him. And so when, when He came as designed by the Father, and He came the way that He did, all this suffering and all this death and the death that He died was not without a motive. There was a purpose. Listen to me. There is a purpose for everything God does. Amen. There is a reason for everything that God does. And His purpose and His reason is always to bring holiness and godliness to His creation, man. Amen. And He desires that relationship. And He knows in our sin, it's broken. So He sent Jesus. And this motive that He has. I want you to, to, to look at this with me. And here's what I want you to underline some things. What did the Lord achieve through all this? Look in verses 10 through 13. And look at, look at, at, at what these verses tell us. In verse 10, it says, What was His motive? In bringing many sons unto glory. He wanted to save people. Amen? Amen. And the salvation that God had for us, He wanted to provide that salvation. He wanted to bring many sons to glory. He wanted to become the captain of our salvation, the Bible says. How was He going to do that? For suffering. He wanted to suffer. And it don't make sense to us. How many of you want to suffer? 
Don't raise your hand. Because you don't. You don't want to suffer. You don't want to go through tribulation. You don't want to go through pain. You don't want to go through sickness. You don't want to go through disease. None of us want that, do we? I hope not. Y'all, you need to go see a psychiatrist today, man. Because you need help. But he came with the express intention of becoming the captain of our salvation. And God had proclaimed in his prophecies in Isaiah, Ezekiel, all through the Old Testament, that he would be a suffering servant. He wasn't going to come like the Jewish people thought he was going to come. They ignored all of this. So he came as the captain of our salvation, and he was made perfect through suffering. And listen to the rest of this. For he, both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. He not only came to be our Savior, to be our captain of salvation, but he came to save you, I want you to listen to me, to the uttermost. Amen. And the one who sanctifies us sanctifies us to be like Him. Amen. Amen. And He says in the Word right here, and we are one. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you see what that says? That He that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. And because we are sanctified by Him, and because we are sanctified in Him through His suffering, we'll get to that in a minute, and we are one with Him, the Bible says, listen to this, He is not ashamed of you. He is not ashamed to call you brethren. Folks, let me tell you what. You can feel ashamed before God. Are you listening to me? But the scripture tells us he's not ashamed of you. He knows we're sinners. He knows we have sinned. He knows we fall short of the glory of God. But he gave us Jesus, the captain of our salvation through suffering, to suffer for us, that he can sanctify us and call us brethren. And then look in verse 12. He says, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Where? Where is it going to be proclaimed? In the church. Amen? Oh, don't you ever tell me you don't need to come to church. Yes, you do. <coughs> Amen? That suffering service, servant, this is his church. And he says that he has sanctified us. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. And he wants you to declare him in the church. Amen. Amen. He wants you to do it. When we testify tonight, you know, it's funny. And we're all guilty of this. Anybody got a testimony tonight? Something else? Every Sunday we do this. And sometimes there's a long pause. You know why that is? We're trying to think of something. Listen to me. And I'm not getting on to you because I don't sit there and I don't say much either. But we're sitting there trying to think of something. What exactly really neat has God done for me this week that I can get up and share about? You know what? If you got up this morning, he did something really neat. Amen. 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 If you are a child of God and you have been saved by him, he's done something really neat for you. Amen. If he's not ashamed of you and calls you his brother, that's really neat, ain't it? How much neater can he get to us? <coughs> Amen. We don't have to have an event in our lives to have a testimony. We've already had the event. It was called our salvation. Amen. And we need to testify about it. Amen. And so he said, I will declare thy name in the midst of the church and I will sing praises unto thee. That's what he says. That this is all uh, in line with what he came to do. And then he says in verse 13, he says, I will put my trust in him. He came and died for us. He has a relationship with us. He has saved us, filled us with his spirit, and we are supposed to be aware of his abiding presence in our lives. Are you aware of that? Do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is abiding in you now? Amen. 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 If you believe that, 
And you believe that you also, because this relationship works both ways, He not only abides in you, but you abide in Him. Amen? And so He wants you to trust Him with His abiding presence in your life. Let me tell you what. Sometimes we get it in our head that because of what we're suffering in life, God just turned His back on us. That is a lie from hell. God never turns His back on you. Amen? If, you're his, if you have been saved through His suffering Son, He's not ashamed of you. He wants you to declare Him, and He wants you to trust Him. Amen? The Bible is very plain. All the people in the Old Testament and New Testament, they suffered. They suffered tribulations. They suffered pain. They suffered sickness. They suffered death. And we're all going to suffer those things. But the difference in us, the, uh, the, the saved person suffering and the lost person suffering, is we have an abiding presence in our lives. He hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. He is ever present with us. And y'all, we don't have to be away for him to speak to us. Amen? Amen. He's talking to us all the time. Do you listen to him? Amen. And then he says again, Behold, I and the children which God has given me. So we can declare his name in the church, we can trust him, and we can behold him as children of God. Folks, if, as a child of God, you see God in a whole different light than a lost person does. Amen? Amen. If you don't believe me, you go out here to some of these liberal wackos and try to have a conversation with them about God. And you'll see they've got some zoo, zoony, zoony, zoony ideas about Him, about godliness, and about holiness. And everything that we teach and everything the Bible teaches us to know about God, they're right the opposite from that. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so you have to be careful. So we, we must behold that we are the children of God as He has made us His children. Now, what is the ultimate goal? That's the motive. That is why Jesus suffered. That is why He suffered so that we could do these things, know these things. Now, what is the ultimate goal behind Him having to do what He did on the cross? What is the ultimate goal? Let's look in, in these, these next verses. And I've got these written down because I had to go through them in my head and look at them over and over and over again. What is the ultimate goal in Jesus? And why did he have to suffer? Why did he have to die that way? Children ask this question a lot. Listen to this. Number one, it's found in verse 14. That he may destroy the power of the devil. Are you listening to me? It's no accident that the Bible refers to Satan as the God of this world, as the God of darkness. He brought the temptation. He brought the sin. He, could, he deceived Eve, and he brought sin into the world, and the dominion of the earth was taken away from man and given to Satan because of that sin. Jesus Christ came to take that back. Amen. 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 This is my Father's world. This world belongs to the sovereign servant who is the captain of my salvation and he is in full control of every bit of it. Mm -hmm. But our part is we got to make him captain of our hearts right. in order for him to achieve that in us. Amen. So he came here to destroy the power of of Satan, the devil. It says that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 55. I read this a lot of time in the graveside. Paul wrote, wrote this question, Oh death! Where's his thing? Oh grave! Where is your victory? And he answers his own question. You know where he says it's at? It's swallowed up in victory through Jesus Christ. Y'all, the, son the, the sons of God, the children of God, the brethren of Jesus Christ don't need to fear death. Amen? Amen. Because to us, death is a gateway 
to His presence right. and to His glory. Amen? I don't look forward to dying to you. You know why I don't? Because I don't know how it's going to come about. And that's what we're afraid of. And the Bible says that He destroyed this power that Satan has over us concerning death. And look at verse 15. The, the, the second one. To the, no, let me read you another scripture that, that reiterates this about the death. Revelation 1 and 18. Listen to this scripture. When Jesus encountered, when John the Revelator encountered the living Savior in heaven. Now, He's in heaven. Amen? And, and He's taken up into heaven and He's seeing all these things. He encountered Jesus, and this is what Jesus says to Him in Revelation 1 and 18. He says to Him, I am He that liveth and was dead. Amen? That's who Christ is. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Satan ain't got them keys no more, y'all. Jesus does. Amen. And I'm glad the captain of my salvation is God and aren't you? Amen. That's when I when I die, I don't have to worry about going to the devil. I get to go to my Savior, Amen. Everybody else that dies that don't know Jesus, they just stay in the grave. Not us. We go to Jesus. We go to Jesus because He is the captain of our salvation. Perfect through His sufferings. Amen. He died for that. And then it also says, the second one, that we find in, in uh, verse 15, to deliver them who were in bondage to the fear of death. He wants to take away that fear of death. He wants to take away, he, he don't want you to go out and kill yourself. That's not what he's saying. He don't want you to go out and intentionally die. But he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Now, now what did his disciples in that day, what was their, what was their fear? That as they proclaimed the name of Jesus, they would be killed for that. Amen. And a lot of people of that day turned from Jesus. Because of that fear. Folks, there's people today, listen to me, that's not under even fear of death, but they still refuse to proclaim that name that's above every name. Y'all, if he's not ashamed of us, we should never be ashamed Amen. of him. Amen. 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 We should never be ashamed of him. And so he, he came to deliver them who were in bondage to the fear of death. Number three. It's found in verse 17. To be made like us. Now this is why he came that way. This is why he died that way. He was made like us so he could be a more effective high priest. Amen. God the Father, he, he, when he spoke, it all happened. Amen. And he knew that this relationship between God and man needed this suffering servant. Needed his full attention. That was his plan to begin with. And so Jesus came and he lived like we do. He ate like we do. He moved around like we did. He, he encountered problems like we do. He was rejected. He was accepted. He was threatened. He, all these things happened to him. The Bible says that he was tempted in every way like we are. Listen to me, a lot of people don't get that. It means that means sexually, every way you're tempted, he was tempted that way. But the difference between us and him, he didn't sin. Amen. He didn't yield to the temptation. He overcame that temptation. He had to, Brother Jim. Mm -hmm. If he hadn't, he would have been an unworthy sacrifice at Calvary. So he overcame this thing. So he came not only to deliver us from the bondage of death, but to be made like us so he could be a more effective high priest. Let me tell you all this. When Jesus Christ died and rose again and the Holy Ghost was poured out upon us, worship, listen to me, worship changed. Amen? Amen. If it hadn't changed, We'd have to have a catch pen out there full of sheep and goats. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? 
we would have to come and bring something to sacrifice for the sins we committed this week. And guess what? Next week, we'd have to bring some more of them. It changed. Worship changed. We went from, from worshiping God on the Sabbath day to worshiping God on the first day. Why? Well, there's a, there's a whole religion out there can't can't comprehend this. <laughs> I don't know why. Because on the day he rose from the dead, the day of his resurrection was on the first day of the week. And his church comes together every first day of the week, we call Sunday, to celebrate the resurrection of the one who died for us. Hallelujah. That's easy enough to explain, ain't it? That's why we do this. And so he was he 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 died like this, but he was made this way so he could be a more effective high priest. Now, the next one, number four, look at the bottom of, page, uh, of verse 17. And he said, to be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, listen to this, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Jesus Christ had to die in order to reconcile the sinner to the Holy God. Are you getting this? Jesus Christ had to die and shed His blood and suffer for us so He could reconcile the sinner to the Holy God. And all the reconciliation only takes place through a relationship with Him. Without Him, you have no reconciliation. That's why you have to be saved. Amen? Amen. He came to reconcile us for our, for our sins. And then the last one, listen to this. Uh, in the last verse. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Now this word succor don't mean that he was a sucker. Don't get that confused because it's not that same word. It don't mean a lollipop that we lick. It means, the word sucker means to help or relieve in difficulty or distress. He didn't come to take away your problems. He came to dwell with you to walk with you through those problems. Amen? He came for that purpose. That's what he, this relationship is all about. And because he had suffered these things, because he had been tempted in every way as we have, he can do this because he understands your pain. He understands your failure. A lot of preachers won't preach this. Jesus Christ understands because he was tempted that way. And because of who he was, he overcame that temptation. Amen? Amen. Now, He always in our temptation offers us a way out. Mm -hmm. Amen? But He knows good and well we don't always take that. So then what? Because He's not ashamed of us. Because He suffered for us. Because He died for us. Because He shed His blood for us. We can still come to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. He, the Bible says about him, and we'll talk about this a little tonight, he is not a God who cannot be touched by our infirmities. In other words, he is a God that when you fail, you can come to him and he understands what you were feeling when you failed. Now, don't get me wrong. That don't mean he says, okay, just forget it. That's not what he means. But it does mean that when you fail, you can come to him and receive forgiveness Amen. by the simple act of confession. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad for Jesus? Amen. And that scripture right here says, but we see Jesus. Y'all, I am so glad today, today that we have a Savior that came, He lived, He died, He rose again. He has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. He is my champion of salvation. Amen. And He desires 
a relationship with me and you. Amen. Amen. The question is, do you have a relationship with Him? Have you asked Him to save your soul? Have you got unrepented sin in your life that you have not confessed to Him yet? And if so, why? Why would we carry that burden of sin? Why would we carry the guilt of sin? And you know what? If His presence abides in you and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to let you in on a secret. You cannot sin against God that you're not convicted of that sin. Right. Amen. Amen. This is some hard preaching right here, I know. And if you, on a daily or a weekly basis, sin over and over and over and over, and you don't feel a conviction for it, I'm going to venture to say you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to venture to say that He don't abide in you. Because the Holy Ghost, that holy part, the comforter that was sent to be placed in us, one of the works of the Holy Spirit in our lives is to convict us, not condemn us, convict us of our sin. That's our cue. When we feel that conviction to confess it, God. And the promise has been made. He will hear you. Listen to me. He will hear you. And He will forgive you. And He will wash you in that precious blood of our Savior, the captain of our salvation. And He will make you holy and righteous Amen. and clean Amen. before Him. And our relationship goes unbroken, untethered, and we can live peaceably. Maybe not with man, but with God. Right. Do you have that peace in your life? And folks, I see it all over the country. We have churches that are just so destroyed and so torn up. People cannot get along. You know why? Because they had not made that peace for the Holy God, for the captain of our salvation, who became that through suffering. And He wants us to bring our suffering to Him. Not that He can just take it away, but because He will suffer with you. Amen. And give you strength and courage to overcome. Amen. And I said a while ago that apart from Jesus you can't do anything. There's a counter verse to that. And this is what it says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. 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 You know why I confess my sins? Because Christ has strengthened me. He gave me the desire to want to please Him. Amen. Y'all, before I got in this pulpit, I asked the Lord to forgive me. I confessed everything I could think of in my mind and my heart. So I could stand up here today clean with the captain of my salvation to proclaim to you that he suffered for you, died for you, and has the ability to cleanse you from anything except blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you can talk about me all you want to, but the Holy Ghost, all right. you're not going to talk about him. It's unforgivable. Okay. Amen. Amen. And y'all, we borderline. We insult the Holy Spirit in our lives by suppressing His power and having our will be done instead of His will be done. Right. Right. By suppressing the sin or the confession of sin and putting it off, we put ourselves in great jeopardy. Amen? Great jeopardy. We just stand for it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Be in prayer. Think about these things. I hope you took some notes today. That you'll know what Jesus did, why he did it, and what that ultimate goal was.
was to save us and to have a relationship with us. And he's standing here. He's in this place today. And he's available to you to bring your requests, your petitions, your infirmities, your sins. He's here. And he wants you to confess those sins before him. He wants you to call upon his name. He is not ashamed of you, and he calls you brethren. And by the same way, the Father glorified the Son and sanctified Him. Through that suffering champion, the Father also sanctifies us, and we are one in Him. Praise God. If you don't feel that way today, if you don't feel like you're one in Him, would you come? If you don't feel like today that, that you're even saved, would you come? If you don't feel conviction for your sins, would you please come? And if you have sin in your life, and folks, the Lord set a high bar when He said the very thoughts that we think can be sin. Remember what He told those men? You don't got to commit adultery to be guilty of it. You can look at a woman and lust at her or her in your own heart. And in your heart, you have committed adultery before God. See, because God looks at the heart, I can't see that part of you, but He can. What's He telling you to do right now? What's He telling you to do? Do it. Maybe you're here today and you're looking for a church home and you'd like to be a part of this ministry and you feel like God's calling you and a part of this ministry. Would you please come? We'd love to have you if God's, if that's God's desire. What's He telling you right now? Is He speaking to your heart? Do you feel His presence? Do you see a sin in your life that He's trying to get you to cleanse? What's He doing? Just agree with Him. Say, yes, Lord, I see you. I hear you. And come on and give it to Him. What He's wanting you to do. He's wanting to give you the victory because He's already won it. being here today. God bless you all. Hold that thought. <laughs> Hesitation? You get left out hesitating. <laughs> What can we do for y'all today? Well, we want to Amen. 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 Okay. All right. Well, let's pray together. Father God, we, we love you. We thank you for this sweet couple, God. We thank you for their desire, God, to be a part of your your ministry here in the country. We, we, we just praise you, God, and here in a minute, Lord, I know that congregation is going to be so overjoyed and happy that, that they have made this decision and received them into our fellowship, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are God of all love, of all creation, that you have saved us, that you are our champion, our Savior, our God. You have done all of it for us. Thank you for that. Thank you for these sweet people who realize, God, that you're their God, you're their Savior, and they want to believe you and they want to work for you, God. Thank you for that, Lord. Bless their hearts, O oh God. Fill them so full of the Holy Spirit, God. That everywhere they go, they talk about you and give you glory and praise. Thank you for that, Father. Bless them, O oh God. And we want to praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. What's your first name again? Mitchell. Mitchell? Terry. Karen? Terry. Terry. Oh, we got a last name. Terry.
Terry. Man, you know, one of these days I'm going to remember the name. But I think I'm going to be in glory when it happens. Amen. Amen. I've always just called them the McCaslins. So, anyway, now I call them brother and sister McCaslin, brother Terry. Uh, uh, sister Terry, Brother Mitchell. There we go. There we go. <laughs> now, let's get this done. Oh, uh, do we have anybody make a money? Uh, Brother Jim. Second. 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 All in favor say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All opposed say oh my. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all have heard me say this probably before. You didn't hear any oh my's out there. So, they all agreed to accept you and, and, and your faith in Jesus Christ. That you have confessed to me just now. You have that faith. You're saved people. They want to move their membership from open door, so we'll need to apply for a letter. And Vicky, if we get in, we need to do the paperwork here in a little while, or tonight or tomorrow, sometime. We'll get it done. Anyway, uh, but I want you to look at this group out here. You have entered into this fellowship, and you have become a part of this congregation. And this congregation makes a, a, a vow to you, a covenant with you, that they're going to love you, they're going to pray for you, they're going to support you. When you're in need, they're going to come to you. They're going to cry with you. We're going to laugh with you. We're going to have joy with you. We're going to be sad with you. We want to be in fellowship with you. And we want you to be that with us. We want you to make that same covenant back to us. That you will work here. That you will minister here. That you will do all you can to further the kingdom and the cause of Jesus Christ. But most importantly, that when you're out past these doors, that you be a witness for that's what I ask you to do. Amen. Amen. Now, God's good, isn't he? Amen. And you know, that was one of my short invitations, and I like to blew it, didn't I? <laughs> God, God don't let us do that. Amen. And so, God bless you all. Now, don't forget to be in prayer for Brother Gary and for Brother Bill. Brother Bill is, is really struggling right now. So, y'all come around and give this couple the right hand of fellowship. Tell them how much you love them and, and, and tell them what I'm going to tell them. It's about blooming time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We love y'all. Let's uh, let's have a word of prayer, and uh, and y'all don't forget to come around and and uh, and give them the right hand of fellowship. Brother Gary, would you prior dismiss a prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you do for us, and we thank you, Lord, for the Lucasters coming to us today and, and joining this church. And we just praise your name. And, and we thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus here for, for our salvation and, and, and doing so much for us. We pray that you'll be with those that couldn't be here today that are sick and that need, need you. And, and we know you can do all things and that you're with each one of us. We pray that you'll uh, bless each one here today and that, that as we go to our homes that you'll watch over and protect us all and, and that we'll be back this evening. We just praise your name and we love you, Lord, and we just thank you so much. These things we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.